The universe, in other words, do you really know what you're talking about when you say those type of words? We're going to find out coming up next right here on the Parker J. Cole Show. And welcome to this edition of the Parker J. Cole Show. I am so glad you are here with me today. We have my much loved returning guest, Marshall Montenegro from Christian Answers for the New Age, on the show today. I always enjoy when she's on the show. And thank you again, Marshall, for being with us. We're going to introduce you in just a few moments. Just want to let you know to all those who celebrated with me on Tuesday for my fourth year anniversary of The Right Stuff, I want to thank you so much for your support. I never take it lightly when you support me. So I just want to say thank you publicly for your support on Tuesday for my four-year anniversary of hosting The Right Stuff. If you want to weigh in on our topic, you certainly can by calling in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or if you hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag PJC Show with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, friends. I'm Dr. Mike Spaulding, inviting you to listen to great Bible teaching on the Transforming Word radio show and podcast. All shows are available on iTunes and Stitcher. Search for the Transforming Word and subscribe for notification of new shows. You may also listen to every episode from my website, www.thetransformingword.com. In addition to the Transforming Word, I want to make you aware of my interview, news, and opinion show, Soaring Eagle Radio. If you're interested in engaging conversations related to a variety of topics not covered by typical news media, then check out Soaring Eagle Radio. You may subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher, and you may listen to every episode on my website, www.soaringeagleradio.com. For more information on my ministries, please email me, Pastor Mike, at cclohio.com. Again, that's Pastor Mike at cclohio.com. Thank you for listening to these shows, and please leave me a note when you do. God bless you today. Are you a reader looking for more compelling Christian fiction? Maybe something a little more edgy or a bit more real? Are you tired of most Christian fiction shying away from the truth and settling for a rose-tinted view of the world and its issues? Or are you an author who has a compelling story to tell, but you're afraid it doesn't jive with today's brand of Christian or secular fiction? Are you tired of Christian publishers telling you that your content is too edgy? Or maybe you've tried submitting your content under the radar to secular publishers, only to be told your themes are a bit too religious. We invite you to take a look at the Crossover Alliance. We are an online publishing company that specializes in edgy Christian speculative fiction. Speculative fiction with Christian themes and real-world content. Our company is formed from authors and readers just like you who are breaking into the mainstream and Christian markets with this compelling genre. Head over to the www.thecrossoveralliance.com for all the details on who we are, what we do, and what we accept. Right now, if you sign up for our email newsletter, you'll receive a free digital copy of our first short story anthology. Check us out today and help us spread the word about the Crossover Alliance, where light shines brighter in the darkness. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to the Parker J. Cole Show on WPJC 104.5. We are going to have a phenomenal time today with my returning guest, co-host, and contributor today, Marsha Montenegro. She is from Christian Answers for the New Age. And those of you who follow me for some time, you know that Marsha has been on our show many times. She is so adept at showing us the very subtle ways the New Age theology practices and other elements of that philosophy have entered a church. And so what she is doing is standing guard to help us be aware of that that new hit thing that may be hitting the church may not be as new as you think, and it may not be as godly as you think. And so without further ado, I want to introduce our guest co-host and contributor today, Marsha Montenegro. Marsha, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, Jennifer. Thanks so much for having me on. 
I'm glad that you were able to join me, too. I always enjoy having you on the show to talk about this because we listen to a lot of words, and words are quite powerful. Um, just in listening to them, I mean, I'm a writer, so I, I write all the time, and they're quite powerful. But we want to be aware of the meaning behind words. And so I thought it was a, a depth to call the show The Universe in Other Words because people are going to recognize that. But people are going to look at the universe, and some people are going to get one interpretation of that word. Others are going to get others and still more are going to get others. And it's the context that it's used that we need to be aware of when we talk about this. And so I'm really glad that you suggested that we do this show so people can know and be aware of these red flags that come up when it comes to the usage of words. And so I'm really excited to dig down and deep into the topic. But before we do that, go ahead and give us a short bio of who you are, in case for those who haven't heard of you before. Okay, sure. Um, I uh, was... Uh, many years involved in New Age beliefs and practices, which included um, forms of Eastern spirituality, especially Buddhism and especially Zen Buddhism, although I had been briefly involved in Tibetan Buddhism as well. And um, I kind of combined that with some Hindu ideas and had different other ideas that are just New Age out there, um, and I I didn't believe in everything that is considered New Age, and no one in the New Age does. You're always combining things that appeal to you or that you think is true. So it can vary from person to person, but I did have a particular spirituality that was blended from those various sources, and I was also a professional certified astrologer, And I taught astrology and was involved in the Astrological Society in many ways, including being president and very active in that, of course, because I considered astrology to be my calling. So Mm -hmm. I was just living a life that had this worldview based on seeing meanings behind things, believing in the spiritual realm that you can access. And the more you access it, you know, the more spiritual you become as you do things like the Eastern style meditation and other types of teachings that you get through a lot of different teachers. So there's so many forms of the New Age, so many stripes, but they all have a a core. They're all around a certain core. So that's what I usually try to to talk about when I'm explaining the New Age. So I was in that for a long time until God just intervened in my life and drew me to Christ. And I finally the day came when I trusted Christ while I was reading the Bible and became born again. And after that, everything changed (laughs) Um, and eventually um, had a um, ministry to educate Christians on the New Age as well as reach out to people in the New Age. Christian Answers for the New Age, which is the name of my ministry, and also the name of my website where I have many, many articles. um, A lot of them will relate to what we're going to discuss today. So. I would like the listeners to know they can go to that website, click on the articles page, and they can just scroll down and see which articles there they might want to read. I'm glad you let people know about your background so you're not coming out of a vacuum. Like some people may not have been in the occult and been in New Age theology and don't understand it, whereas you truly understand it, which is why your expertise comes in handy when you try to show individuals and the church as a whole that the very subtle, insidious uh, elements of New Age do make their way into the church. And um, it's because of that very nature of the New Age, because it is very nebulous, and it's not always so concrete and clear. That's one thing you mentioned as you were telling us your background, is that there are many different beliefs because there's nothing firm about it. But let's go, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. And so 
well, the, the majority of this show is going to be talking about the universe and other words. And there's words that people are using that are hot words today that people like to hear. And they may not quite understand what all of this means. So what I want to do, uh, Marsha, as I go through these words, we have a certain list of words there. If you have one that you want to, uh, if Marsha can respond to, don't feel, uh, feel free to call in, 646-668-8485, and then press 1 to be live on air. So we're going to go into a certain order here. But what I'm going to do, Marsha, is that I'm going to look at the word and I'm going to think what I think it means first, you know, just from my basic okay. understanding of what that word means. And then I want you to delve into what that word means. That way some people may have the same ideas that I have. Others may have something right. else. So we're going to, or we may not even know at all, which is fine, because that's what we want to be educated okay. on. <laughs> and so the first word we're going to talk about is consciousness. Now, when I see the word consciousness, I'm thinking of my thoughts. I'm thinking of my feelings I have, conscious of myself as a person. I'm conscious of myself as a person that lives in the city of Detroit. You know, I'm conscious and aware, things of that nature. That's what I think when I think of consciousness. It has different meanings for me, but consciousness, I'm conscious of myself as a human being, as a living, being a breathing, alive. I'm conscious, I'm awake. You know, I'm conscious <laughs> as in I know who I am and things of that nature. That's what I think of when I think of consciousness. Now, what is the different term when someone within the New Age realm hears consciousness, what are they saying? Okay, yes, and what you said is the normal understanding of that word. Um, but in, in the New Age, when the term usually is used, or if it's being used in the New Age context, it has a meaning of of uh, a consciousness that is beyond the normal consciousness. So often the word higher is attached to this, higher consciousness, um, but not always. And it's, it can be attached to other words as, as well, like Christ, Christ consciousness, which is also on the list. So your consciousness, developing your consciousness, I have seen it used by itself now in a new age context. So it can, it can mean like the higher Self, the higher understanding and so in the new age you have this view of reality that we're all here on earth in this material reality we're people we're in these bodies we have these minds and these feelings and that's all kind of the normal or what is perceived as the the norm however in the new age there's always something beyond the normal and beyond the material that people, most people aren't aware of. So there's this other part of you that is really, it's like a, it's either a potential or it's there that is this higher self. And so your consciousness can be developed so that you become more spiritually aware of your true nature and the true nature of reality, which in New Age terms would mean there's um, a, a divine self that can be developed. You can have this higher understanding, this higher consciousness of who you really are. You know, you're not just Parker J. Cole or Marsha Montenegro or Joe Smith. You know, there is this other self there, this divine self. And so consciousness can... It can imply that or it can mean it. And so it can be used a lot of times in sentences like we want to develop our consciousness to a higher plane or he has a higher consciousness um, of who he is or she has a higher consciousness of, than most people. So sometimes it's used like that as kind of a vocation of this higher self and higher understanding. So probably I will say more with other words that will relate to what I just said. Well, it's a good thing that you brought that to mind because it lets us know that here we're thinking one thing and the person who is entrenched in New Age um, is thinking something completely different. They're thinking of a more uh, spiritual realm and they're talking about, you know, developing yourself right. to kind of like divinity, almost like you're going to develop yourself into some sort of divinity. And um, yeah. it's very interesting that you mentioned that because a lot of these words, we're using them without understanding them. That's why I think it's always important to understand the context of what someone is saying. And right. the next word, 
Yeah, the next word we're going to talk about is the universe or universe. Now, when I hear the word the universe, I'm a Star Trek fan. I am a sci-fi lover, and I love science. And so I think of the universe as a whole, this massive plane of existence that we live in, you know, with the stars and the galaxies and the, the, the right. everything else, things we don't know, things we do know, what's composed of it, Earth planets, you know. And then... I also sometimes shrink it down to my sphere of influence, what my spirit, my universe is my sphere of influence. You know, nothing transcendental about that. You know, it's a physical right. realm that we live in. And so that's what I think of when I see the term the universe. So how does someone who is in the New Age uh, thought, how do they see the universe? Yes, the universe, as you described it, is the normal understanding the universe in terms of the New Age context is something, of course, beyond that. It's going to be something spiritual. So, for example, I'll give a good example. In the very, very popular book and DVD, The Secret, which came out around 2006, 2007, the universe is used so many times in there. When I was reading that, I started counting it, and I finally gave up. <laughs> <laughs> it got to be right. it got to be too mm-hmm. tedious to count <laughs> count so oh I gave gosh. up I can't remember what number I got to before I gave up but anyway I was like oh what's the point I'm not I'm just going to say it throughout the book so the universe and I heard this all the time in the new age I still hear it I still see it on new age websites and new age books so th- so you might hear someone say well I am so glad I I came to this meeting today I just know the universe wanted me to be here. Or they might say, um, if you really, really believe that you have that new car, it's because the universe thinks you should have it. So there, the, it's, it's referred to a lot, but not really defined. And so you have to get the meaning from, from the way people use it. It's kind, it can be kind of a substitute for God, okay, because usually in the New Age, God is not personal, usually. Sometimes God is personal, sometimes he's not, sometimes he's both. Um, so you get a real variety of, of who God is in the New Age, but the universe often kind of substitutes for it. So the universe is impersonal, because it's kind of this power or source of everything, but it also is personal because it knows you and it hears you. Um, In The Secret, they talk about how if you affirm something in a positive way, the universe will bring it to you. So, But if you say it in a negative way, like if you say, I don't want to be sick, the universe doesn't hear that because you're saying it in a negative way. So you have to say it in a positive way. That's because this kind of thinking uh, comes from something called New Thought, which is a movement uh, that started primarily in the 1800s and produced three major churches that came out of it that started in the 1800s and early 20th century that are still around, like Unity, Christian Science, and Church of Religious Science, which is now called um, they change their name, and I always forget. It has, it's a real generic name, like the spiritual communities. I'm going to have to look it up. I can't. I can never mm-hmm. remember it. Anyway, oh, those fine. three. Those are three New Thought churches. But the New Thought movement is much broader than the the three churches. There's a New Thought website, and the New Thought movement claimed to be Christian. And now the New Age, which is distinct from the New Thought movement however, took a lot of the new thought beliefs because the New Age draws from different sources, and new thought is one of the big sources the New Age draws from. So uh, some of the terms I'm going to discuss are are straight out of new thought. Um, And so you'll hear people in new thought and in the New Age use the term universe and the universe. So it becomes kind of like the substitute for God or perhaps this source of um, of where we draw our energy and where we attract things to ourselves. It comes from the universe. And mostly the way I hear it, it's, it's almost like a substitute for God. 
Marsha, do you think when people use the term the universe, because it's, it's heard all over the place, like you hear it on TV, you hear it on radio, mm-hmm. you hear it everywhere, and would you say that almost using the universe is the politically correct way to respond to everyone's different beliefs? Yes, I think it could be it could be used that way by people who maybe don't want to say God and they mm-hmm. just want to say, "Oh, you know, the universe has been so good to me this week," you know. And it's mm-hmm. kind of this it sounds it doesn't sound like you're claiming any kind of specific religion um mm-hmm. or religious belief, so you aren't going to offend anybody by saying that because people aren't going to be offended by the universe. You know, (laughs) they may not necessarily understand what you mean, but they're not going to be offended, you know, because you're like, oh, the universe, you know, gave me this wonderful trip to Hawaii, you know, so it it is, it it could be a politically correct thing. So it's very inoffensive. You know, I I, I really can't imagine anyone be offended, they might be mystified, but not offended by it. And we are talking today to Marsha Montenegro. She is from Christian Answers for the New Age. She is tackling the universe in other words. And so the words that we use in everyday talk with our friends, colleagues, family members, are we using New Age words? And if we are, what are the meanings behind those words? That's what Marsha is doing for us today. She's educating us about these type of words so we can understand that what we may mean by them it's actually what we may mean by them, and when we're using them in our conversation, means something completely different to the other. And so if you want to weigh in on topic, you certainly can by calling in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag PJC Show, with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We'll be right back. Autism affects 1 in 68 children, sweeping all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. Autism is a lifelong brain disorder that leads to untold challenges to the physical, financial, and social well-being of people with autism and their families. Resources are stretched thin. The Autism Alliance of Michigan, a collective voice for families across the entire state, uses resources to help families battle challenges right here, right now. If you or anyone you know needs help navigating the autism journey, contact the Autism Alliance of Michigan today, 877-463-AAOM, or visit them online at aaomi.org. Hi, friends. I'm Dr. Mike Spaulding, inviting you to listen to great Bible teaching on the Transforming Word radio show and podcast. All shows are available on iTunes and Stitcher. Search for the Transforming Word and subscribe for notification of new shows. You may also listen to every episode from my website, www.thetransformingword.com. In addition to The Transforming Word, I want to make you aware of my interview, news, and opinion show, Soaring Eagle Radio. If you're interested in engaging conversations related to a variety of topics not covered by typical news media, then check out Soaring Eagle Radio. You may subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher, And you may listen to every episode on my website, www.soaringeagleradio.com. For more information on my ministries, please email me, Pastor Mike at cclohio.com. Again, that's Pastor Mike at cclohio.com. Thank you for listening to these shows, and please leave me a note when you do. God bless you today. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to the Parker J. Cole Show on WPJC 104.5. Again, so glad you're with me as we talk about the universe in other words. And this is making sure that we understand the very subtle ways that New Age thought has entered our society and has also entered the church. I'm pretty sure as you're listening to the sound of my voice and to Marsha Montenegro from Christian Answers for the New Age, you understand that some of the words that you may have been using does have some new age elements to that. So I want you to be aware of that. What you do with the information is between you and the Lord. But one thing I love, and I know, Marsha, you would agree with me, is that we just want to inform you because we want to be sure that when we stand before Christ, we can at least say, we told them, Lord, and they just to do what they wanted to do. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this. And I want to go down the list and continue down the list. So the next word we're going to tackle is spirit. Now, when I think of spirit, a couple things come to mind. When I think of spirit, I think of the Holy Spirit, of course, the second, the third person of the Trinity. 
I think of the fact that I have a spirit, which is the um, eternal part of me. I'm, I'm not saying it right, but it's, you know, mm-hmm. I'm body and spirit. Um, I don't know, was it was that dualism or something? I don't know. And then uh, I think of the spirit of things, like in the right way, like the right way to feel about something, you know, the way you t- tackle something. That's what I think of when I hear spirit. So go ahead, tell us what is the new age meaning behind spirit? Yes, and I um, I want to say this word I find more difficult to explain mm-hmm. than the universe um, okay. because this is defined even less or maybe not defined at all. You often hear this used more by people like psychics and mediums and possibly those into modern witchcraft than you do from New Agers, although you might hear New Agers use it. Mm-hmm. And of course, a lot of people who are psychics and mediums and witches are also in into the New Age and have New Age beliefs. So there's a lot of overlap because technically a psychic and a medium are practicing the occult. Um, but a lot of people who do that, just like I was an astrologer, um, which is an occult activity, but I had New Age beliefs. So there's a lot of overlap. But I hear this a lot from mediums and people like psychics and maybe like tarot card readers and and they'll say spirit um spirit is giving me you know the information that you need to travel a long way um this year on your vacation you shouldn't take a vacation near your home or something like that let's say they're talking to to a client and they'll say spirit is telling me this or i got that from spirit And so spirit is kind of um, source out there that is guiding, a guiding source that is passing on information in some way. And um, so it's a little different from the universe, which I think has more roles (laughs) than Mm -hmm. spirit is a little more specific and used a little more in terms of getting information from um, spirit is telling me this and spirit is telling me that this is a word i did not use when i was in the new age um although i had i had friends who used it and most of these friends were people who were involved in being um psychics or mediums And I think so. I think it's a little bit more common with them. However, some New Agers will use it, and sometimes they'll use it maybe in place of the universe. And so they may see spirit as sort of this uh, the spiritual entity um, that we're all united to. That is all the spirit. Everything is spiritual in the New Age, so we're all part of spirit. It's like the energy that we're all part of. So some of them may use it in that sense. So this term can be a little tricky um, as far as what do people mean by it. Interestingly enough, as I see sort of like the correlation between the universe and spirit, it's almost as if the universe is a more broader term to encompass a bigger thing, where our spirit, like you said, is a more specific term. It's almost as if Mm -hmm. like, okay, this is this guidance, whatever I'm going to get, whatever I'm going to get for you, is from this thing, this specific thing, spirit. And I think I can see how people in the church listening to someone who may be of the new age can get confused by that because we often say, well, the spirit told me to tell you this, or the spirit, I feel it in my spirit, right. you know, things like that. We can right. get mixed up by these terms, and so we. That's why we often have to listen very carefully to how people are talking, right. you know. And like one, there's one lady. She says, Holy Spirit. She says, Holy Spirit. And, like, I would say the Holy Spirit. But essentially right. we're talking about the same thing. But someone specifically say spirit, you kind of go like, okay, what spirit are you talking about? It, it helps right. you to be discerned, discerned about what spirit you're talking about. And I think that's important, too. As I said earlier in the broadcast is how subtle New Age thought has entered the church. And so someone can be in there talking one to th- one thing, and you're on a, a whole other different page than they are. So I think that's important that you mentioned that. The uh, the next word on our list is Christ consciousness. Now, to be honest with you, I don't have a clue. I, I'm not quite <laughs> familiar with this term at all. So go ahead and fill my cup with knowledge. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be happy to do that. Um, now, Me this too. word, yes, is normally a word you will not hear Christians use. However, some of the emergence, the people who um, now call themselves progressive Christians, and who started off um, wanting to reach the unchurched generation in the late 90s um, on past 2000, um, have have used this term. Um, I think they're trying to redefine it in a Christian context, but I don't think yeah. that's a good idea. So in, in the New Age context, now this is a term that comes straight out of the New Thought movement. And the New Thought Movement teaches that uh, man um, is innately divine, and Jesus um, was just a man, um, but he was innately divine just like all of us are. But he had the spiritual awareness to realize his inner divinity, and by realizing his inner divinity, he attained Christ consciousness. And he did this to show us that we all can do this. Now, this is something Oprah believes, because Oprah has been primarily influenced by the New Thought movement and was influenced by a unity minister named Eric Butterworth. So, um, you know, she used this term, Christ consciousness. So it basically means an awareness of your inner divinity. And so that's how you can become a Christ is you have an awareness of your inner divinity. It's a very popular term in the New Age. It's used quite often. It's used especially in the New Thought Movement. There's a similar term um, called God consciousness, which has kind of the same idea, but it can be used without necessarily acknowledging Christ. So God consciousness is used um, often associated with Eastern religions, especially Hinduism, because in Hinduism, you everybody has the divine self called the Atman, A-T-M-A-N. And um, so you, you will see sometimes some of the um, Eastern religious groups that came to the United States, um, really starting in the 30s, but they were more noticeable in the 60s. Some of the leaders of these groups started having American followers, um, you mm-hmm. know, yoga. And, uh, and Rajneesh and other people like that, Daffrey John, there was a whole bunch of them. So they would often use the term God consciousness. And what that meant was realizing your inner divinity. They wouldn't necessarily refer to Christ. So that's kind of a twin term of the Christ consciousness. But I think in the New Age, it tends to be more popular than God consciousness, although you definitely will see both. So I just wanted to bring up that other one, even though it's not on the list, because it's related to this one. Now, the way that the, um, as from my from my understanding, the some of the emergents who use this, I think Leonard Sweet uses this, um, and it's supposedly realizing, you know, I think Christ is in you. But I, I think Leonard Sweet went off. Um, let's see, how should I say this? I think that he was not using sound doctrine in his Mm -hmm. understanding because he even thinks that Matthew Fox is a light. He called different people lights. Um, And uh, Matthew Fox is a heretical who believes in Jesus and the Christ as not the same thing, not always the same thing. So you have Jesus, the historical man, and then you have the Christ. And and Matthew Fox believes that we all can attain this sort of Christhood. And so for Leonard Sweet to call him a light uh, certainly makes you wonder where Sweet is coming from (laughs) when he says that. So, you know, what does he really mean by Christ consciousness? Is he really accepting it in this new age kind of way? But So it's definitely a term to watch out for. I would say that it is not a term that can be used um, in harmony with biblical doctrine, with sound biblical doctrine. I don't think there's a way to, to uh, quote, unquote, redefine it so that it can actually mean something that would fit in with the Bible. I, I don't think there's a way to do that. The meaning of it is too clear 
that this is a Christ consciousness that you attain on your own and it's connected to belief in inner divinity. So I think it's completely new thought and new age to the core. Interestingly enough, with the term, the way I'm starting to understand it, it's almost as if Christ is a substance that you can attain Mm -hmm. that make Mm -hmm. it part of yourself and to help you get to better. Thank the Lord that he is not a substance that we have to attain. Thankfully that he is, oh, that he is so much more than that. And I'm glad that you are helping me because I feel like as I listen to you give us these vocabulary words and I start to see what, how, subtle this thing is and how people can use and twist words to mean completely different things and why we as a church have to be equipped with this knowledge. And so I'm really glad, again, that you're going over that. The next word on the list is ancient. And when I think of ancient, I think of how I feel. <laughs> like right now, I feel very, very ancient right now. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a back hurting from something I pulled the other day, and then, you know, I'm getting a year older and all these other kind of things. I feel ancient, you know, but uh, actually, I know that it's uh, a passage of time. You know, after a certain point in in time, you go for I guess from old to ancient. I don't know. I don't know what the distinction is, but uh, I guess there's a distinction between being old and being ancient after a certain period of time. And uh, I think of um, you know, or antiquated things that are antiquated, like we no longer use certain mm-hmm. mythologies we used to use back in the day, so they're ancient mythologies and stuff like that. So I think of this word as it relates to time and how current something is. Obviously, if it's not current, it's old. <laughs> so right. that's how I see right. it. But, you know, but what does ancient mean in New Age thought? Right. And, and of course, there's the idea of ancient history, you know, which is the, a certain time period you go back to. Um, ancient history, ancient documents, you know, which is really what we're, you know, we're talking about, at least, you know, around 2,000 years ago and back. Um, mm-hmm. So there's that term used in scholarship. Um, yes. And that has to do with a time in history, right? Now, ancient in the New Age, the way it's used, it does mean old or something from okay. a long ago, but it's used in a very positive way. This is a case where the word has a spin on it that immediately endorses something um, from a New Age viewpoint. So this is an ancient form of healing, for example. An ancient okay. traditional healing, immediately in the New Age, that gives it an endorsement. It gives it, um, it gives it like this little glamorous um, neon sign around it. <laughs> if this okay. is ancient, then it must be good, because the idea here is that ancient man and ancient traditions, certain ancient traditions and beliefs. Ancient man was somehow closer to the truth, and that has mm. become lost in modern society. Um, we've we've sort of departed from the earth because, in the New Age view, a long time ago, man was closer to the earth. He, you know, when there was less civilization, less industry, or no industry, um, man was living more on the land. You know, man was. Or you, you know, didn't have air conditioning, he didn't go to the grocery store, you know, he had to kill his food and grow his food, etc. So there's this, this glamorizing of ancient man and the earth and nature in the New Age mind. And therefore, what they did has more value because they were closer to the earth and closer to nature and therefore... They were living more in tune and harmony with uh, the divine energy that's in nature and living more in tune with the earth. So they were more, quote unquote, natural, which is another word on the list we'll just we'll come to later. And that makes everything better in the new age mind. And so they'll use the word to promote certain things. And that is supposedly makes it good, like, um, for example, energy healing which is uh, very occultic, and this is where you believe that you're healing someone either by channeling or manipulating some kind of energy and not a physical energy, not an energy that you measure like electricity, but it's this unseen kind of unknown energy. And you, you manipulate this or channel it to heal somebody. Now, they'll say, 
well, this is an ancient form of healing. This has been done for thousands and thousands of years. Well, yes, that's true, but it doesn't make it valid. You know, immediately in their mind, ancient means valid. And so I am seeing this word used more and more, unfortunately, by Christians. And they're giving the same value to this word that the people in the New Age do, as though if it's ancient, it must be good. And this is, um, of course, um, wrong. And uh, people who are saying this, I would early urge them to stop and think for a minute. There are many things that are ancient that are really bad. You know, right. like um, like occultism, like astro- astrology is ancient. Astrology may be the most ancient occult practice in the universe. Started, it goes way, way back to when man first noticed, you know, and started plotting the position of the planets and trying to read meaning into that. Um, so there's a lot of things that are ancient that are very bad. Also, there are things that are ancient that may have been good at the time, but they're no longer um, valid. In other words, they've been superseded by something that is better. We certainly, modern um, technology has, I mean, I would rather have my clothes, be able to wash my clothes in the washing machine than in a stream. I, right. I don't want to go to a stream and wash my clothes. Thank you very much. Not all. <laughs> Not all. And, Not um, all. and we and we, but that's ancient. It's ancient to wash your clothes in a stream. So why aren't these people washing their clothes in streams? And then, um, you know, ancient um, medicine, especially this is alternative medicine, uses this word. So that the spiritual forms, the spiritually based forms of healing, and they're really based on spirituality, not on medicine or science, um, are given some kind of credence by using this word. So this word um, is just, is used a lot and it can apply to many, many things. And that's, this, this is a big red flag, flag word. And I often point it out in some of my posts on Facebook, warning people. I just did it the other day with this. Um, there's a, um, a device called an elf Emmet and it's okay. this headphone you put on and it's supposed to do something to the, your brain waves or, and, and, so, so it makes you calmer, and it does these things to help you sleep better, or help you meditate, et cetera. And it uses the word ancient tradition. We're combining ancient tradition with modern technology. And that's one of the ways it promotes this product. And so I wrote in my post, be careful because see that word ancient there. That's a big red flag when something is being promoted that's new and doesn't have any medical basis at all. And actually it's very unsight pseudoscience. It's not science. So you'll see this word used in pseudoscience as well. It's almost as if the word is being used as a synonym for pure. And with there being such a driven focus return to nature, return to natural remedies and things of that nature with the explosion of alternative medicine, because of the fact that, um, there has been problems with pharmaceutical and modern technologies and medicines. It seems as ancient as being a synonym for pure. And I remember one time on the show you mm-hmm. made the comment that you said nature, just in and of itself, is not pure and nature is not perfect. Mm-hmm. And people right. use that term to say, well, if you go back to nature, you're going back to purity. And I'm thinking to myself, I assure you back in the day if – Folks in the Bible had an air conditioner. They would have. They would have kept that. <laughs> you know what I mean? They would have that. Like, they would have been like, oh, this is just, bless the Lord. We have air conditioning. You know, I just, I just think that would happen. And then uh, I know, I know when I was out of air conditioner at work for a while, I thought I was in the civilization as we knew it. I mean, you know, I didn't want to go back to just having a fan and and peacock feathers and you know, I didn't want to, but. You know, and I'm, I'm being funny and facetious, but we have to understand that just because it's old doesn't mean that it's pure, and just because it's old doesn't mean that it's right. There are a lot of ancient things that existed that we probably don't have, don't have a lot of ideas about that are pr- pretty bad, you know. And so I'm glad you're making this distinction that just because something's old or the mythology is old doesn't mean, mean that it's the best method. I mean, there's a right. reason for modern technology because – People back then they want to continue to work as hard as they are now. That's what technology does. It makes things a little bit easier. You know, of course, you can talk about the right. 
what technology does to people and all that, but that's for another show for another time. And so um, I'm glad we're going through this. And so for those of you listening in, we're talking about the universe and other words. We're talking about words that you may use in your everyday speech that you think are okay to use or you have a certain meaning with them, but someone from the new age is using them in a different context than you are. And so that's what we're doing today is talking about the universe and other words. If you want to weigh in on our topic, you certainly can by calling in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag PJC show with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take another quick break. We will be right back. Hi, is your book club in need of some fresh and exciting questions to ask club members and authors at your next book club meeting? Literization, the book conversation game, is 70 thought-provoking questions to really get into an in-depth discussion about the books you and your club members are reading. These questions really get into the characters, the storyline, and into the author's head. These questions may just give you and your book club members a whole new way to get into a new conversation, a literacy. Literacy is also a great set of tools for bloggers, interviewers, and authors to use a discussion question. Are you ready to get lit? Please visit our website at litversations.com, L-I-T-Z-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N.com. And please like our Facebook page at Simply Said Reading Accessories. Thank you. Has God called you to be a pastor or leader, but the men and women in your church won't let you speak because you're a female? Is the call to minister strong on your life, but you hesitate because you think the Bible tells women to be silent in the church? I'm Jory Micah, and I am here to tell you, sister, that together we can break the glass steeple. I fight and advocate for gender equality in the church, and there are others with me who are holding up the banner. Subscribe to my blog at J-O-R-Y-M-I-C-A-H dot com for interviews, commentary, and uplifting words to give you the motivation to answer the call to ministry. Together, we can break the glass steeple and inspire all of God's children, men and women alike, to answer the call to ministry. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to the Parker J. Cole Show right here on WPJC 104.5. Again, so happy you are here with me. We're having a fantastic time talking to Marsha Montenegro. She is from Christian Answers for the New Age, and it's a ministry geared to help you see the very subtle elements of New Age thought and theology entering the church. If you want to support this ministry, go to ChristianAnswersForTheNewAge.org and you will get more information about it. Find out about Marsha's story, her interviews, her articles. She has dozens and dozens of articles and she's willing to share them with you. So remember, make sure you go to ChristianAnswersForTheNewAge.org and you can talk to Marsha Montenegro if you have any questions. You know, Marsha, we've been just having a fantastic time talking about these words, these New Age words and their meanings. And I know we're not going to be able to get through them all, so we're going to do a part two of the show later on in the year. And so, but I think it's a fascinating topic because at the same time, I'm learning something I didn't know and others are too. And so with that, I want to read a comment that we received from Sheila in Detroit, Michigan. Sheila, thank you so much for your comment. Sheila says, when I read the introduction and the coining of the words consciousness, universe, and the shift, I had to try to put it in perspective. I remember the song, This is the Age of Aquarius, and Let the Sun Shine In were very popular. Then the hippie and flower child movement. During this period, everyone was talking about spiritual awakening, meditation, and getting closer and in tune with the universe, that we are in the world, we shall love everyone, then religious freedom took a different face. There is good in all religion beliefs. People began to search for inner peace, that you come in tune with the God of the universe. Traditional religion did not provide the freedom in which to commune with the God of the universe. These are just my thoughts as I understand the aforementioned. And the aforementioned, she's referring to the show description for our show today. And Sheila, thank you so much for your comment. I want to get your thoughts on this, but before you do that, Marsha, 
I really think that within the new age, there and other people who listen, there is a sincere desire for people to get along, and there's a sincere desire for people to say, let's just stop fighting each other. Let's just let's just do what you want, do whatever mm-hmm. you want. I shouldn't have to tell you you can't do it. Believe what you want. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as you're not hurting other people, as long as you're not doing X, Y, Z to other people or whatever, do whatever makes you feel good. It doesn't matter. There's And there is, I guess, a sense of a superficial kind of comfort in that where you can just do whatever you want, as long as it makes you feel good, as long as you're happy, do whatever you want. And I think that's one of the reasons why these kind of words and thoughts and ideas appeal to people because there is a sincere desire for peace and for frivolity and for um, camaraderie. But at the same time, and I've always said this on this show, does the truth matter? And if it does matter, wouldn't you want to know it? So that's kind of like my thoughts as I listen to Sheila's comment. Well, what are some of your thoughts, Marsha? Uh, yes, I um, I agree with uh, Sheila's overview of how she sees uh, how this all kind of began um, with this movement of wanting to get along with everybody, everyone being connected, um, and then the whole idea of the spiritual awakening and meditation, um, that was primarily coming from the influence of Eastern spirituality. Um, in the country, which was very heavy in the, uh, uh, what well, started by primarily in the 60s, but became very strong in the 70s, and it still is. In fact, it's it's continuing, if not even stronger, for example, with the popularity of mindfulness, which comes from Zen Buddhism. And I mm-hmm. think it's it's in the culture, but it's more subtle than it was in the 60s and 70s. But I agree. And so this idea that we just want to love everyone and everyone wants to get along, all religions are basically good, Um, we all want inner peace, you know, this is what most people are going to agree with. And this kind of thinking, of course, feeds the New Age. I mean, the New Age thrives on this kind of thinking. The New Age um, is always very positive is always promoting uh, very positive and what seem to be very helpful things, you know, so it's very hard to criticize it because it makes it look like you're going against this idea of, well, everyone wants to just get along, you know, and why are you against um, inner peace and why are you trying to divide people with these ideas that are extreme or these ideas that are, are exclusive? So, um, yeah, I, I agree that this, this thinking has been around for a while, and because it is very much embedded in the culture, it makes the culture very receptive to the New Age and to these words, which the New Age is using to its advantage and is infiltrating a lot of different areas of the culture through the use of these words, which we can get into in part two, where I can give you examples um, with other words we haven't been able to discuss yet, how the words are really double meaning and have one meaning that most people are taking it for, like wellness, and then another meaning that's allowing new age things to fly in under the radar. So, um, it's not just a matter of people meaning something different by the words. It's the fact that these words are allowing new age practices to enter mainstream culture. And I think it's because the culture has already been made receptive to it. So that's how I see Sheila's comment. And that's how I would, you know, that's my take on it as far as what I'm talking about today. Now, those of you, those of you who missed the beginning part of our show, don't worry. This show is recorded. You can always click on the link later and listen to it again. But the words we already discussed on this edition of the of the show for the universe and other words, we discussed the word consciousness, the universe, spirit, 
Christ consciousness, consciousness and ancient. And, you know, as Marsha really expanded on these words, when we use them, we're using them in a specific way. But when people who are in the new age and new age thought and philosophy, they're using it very differently. And as the church, we need to be aware. New age is very very subtle. I remember when uh, we had Marsha on the show before, and she was, you know, blowing my head away with some of the things that she was saying and teaching me. And then I heard it in church, I think about several days later, and I was like, whoa, whoa. You know, and I remember just going, no, you shouldn't say that. I didn't say that to her because, you know, I, I'm a peon, you know, but I didn't want to say anything. It was just like, oh, my gosh, you know. This is this is what she, they're talking about. This is what she's talking about, this very subtle thing. And because of the spiritualness of it, if I can use that word effectively, because it sounds spiritual, we're thinking, oh, this, this person believes the same way as I do. And you're like, no, they don't. But then because of the, the lack of critical thinking in the church as well as in the world, we don't take the time out to discover, well, what exactly do you mean when you say this? And because we're so afraid of offending someone, we, are, we don't want to say, well, believe what you want to believe. If you think it's the universe, then it's the universe. If I think it's God, it's God. It doesn't matter. You know, and instead of having conversations of content, you have conversations of absolutely nothing. And so that's why I'm glad to have you with me, Marsha, because even though you may seem as if you're on the, <laughs> in the battlefield writing the things out and making people mad in the church because the church people, they don't even realize the subtleties of New Age. And I think as we get ready to end our show, I want you to kind of give us um, a somber warning of why this type of topic is important. Give us a warning of why this is important because we truly need to understand that we're not just saying that to make people, quote, unquote, feel bad. We want to educate you so that when you hear these words, that is just another trick of, this, of, of Satan. It really is. Yes, exactly. And thanks for giving me um, uh, a minute or two here at the end to mm -hmm. say that. I think we need to be very aware of these words because language really is powerful and, and, and the way words are used can shape people's thinking because it desensitizes. When you get used to hearing a certain word and you think it's acceptable, then when it becomes associated with something that you might have previously questioned, you are more likely to accept it because you assume that uh, of the meaning of that word, which is actually in the, what I'm talking about, a new age meaning. You've actually accepted the concepts that go with it. And so that's one reason that I keep warning about the words. One, well, it's really two reasons. One is to recognize them as red flags. So you're alert and kind of like, okay, I need to check this out because these words are being used about this product or about this idea. Um, and then number two, when the word is being used as a good thing and you know there's this other meaning attached to it, then you know not to to accept what it's being what it's being used for to promote. So um, I will give more examples of that with the um, in our next part in our part two when we do that I can give very specific examples. So yeah, so it's important to know these words because I am seeing the result of people not knowing them and then being surprised, either surprised by something because they thought, oh, I thought it was this and it's really this, you know. So then they're taken unawares, or um, they actually become deceived. So it's it's um, possible to use words to deceive, and that's why we need to be very careful about the words. I like how you said that, Marsha. Marsha is saying this using words to deceive, and that's all it becomes. And they're using these words such as oh, uh, you know, consciousness, and we think, like I said, I think of an awareness of myself. But consciousness is actually trying to attain a, div a divinity. That's what they're using. It. They're using it to attain a divinity, like a God consciousness that's out there. That you can go to, I guess, the planet where it lives and grab it, you know. And so they're, and I'm being facetious when I say that, but understanding the meaning behind these words, then you won't be deceived by them. Then you won't fall for them, you know. And that's why it's so important for us to have these type of discussions. And I know, I know, uh, Marsha, you had, you've gotten flack for your ministry. I know you have gotten flack for your ministry. And what makes you keep moving on? 
when you get flack, especially when you hit on, let's say, a popular Christian teacher or a popular book or a popular song or something like that, what makes you continue when people are against what you are saying? Because you're saying, you know what, this has New Age influence in it, and they don't want to hear it. What makes you keep going on? I guess, you know, the um, first of all, I, I know from my experience what I'm talking about. So I'm, I know that I'm not, I know that what I'm saying is, is, is true. And I really, you know, I really want people to understand. I have this very strong desire for people to understand things. Um, and number two, I think it's, you know, it's clearly or maybe primarily um, the, the Lord um, giving me the desire to persist and, and the prayers of a lot of people to pray for me, my prayer partners, I'm very grateful for them. And the Lord really, I have to say it's the Lord because I don't think in my own strength I could do that. I would get too discouraged or too weary, mm-hmm. you know, and I do get discouraged and weary, but it's so far never enough to, to stop. I think that it, and it also shows me sometimes if people are, criticizing me or reacting I'm often not surprised by it Um, and sometimes when I explain it people then will see it and they'll say oh I didn't know that or I didn't realize that or now that you've explained it I understand better so sometimes I do see a result from me explaining and trying to persuade somebody um, no this is what it really is Um, then they'll see it so because of those kinds of of results that encourages me to continue because I know that um, it can, people can begin to see what I'm saying and some people don't or never will. Well, you know, I have to, I have to let that go because really what I'm doing is sharing information and answering questions and I can't try to change people's minds. I mean, I will try to, use persuasive language if they're interested in asking questions or they say something I think is wrong, I'm going to try to, or say I'm wrong, I'm going to try to show, no, this is what I'm saying. But I can't, you know, hit them over the head and make them see, <laughs> make, them, no. make them see what I want them to see. So I've had to learn to, um, I've had to learn to just let that go. I've had to learn to let it go. Or I'm still, I should say I'm still learning to do that. <laughs> Um, but yeah. that that help, that helps a lot. I have to just accept some people are not going to see it and not going to agree, and I have to just let that go. And that that I've had to learn. That's been a learning process for me. But that does help me persist um, as well. Well, Marsha, I'm glad that you continue to persist. I'm glad that you go out there and you say the things that are unpopular against things that are popular. You know, I'm glad that you do that because you educate me. And, you know, you're my go-to. You already know that you're my go-to. And I <laughs> have something in my mind. I'm like, I'm going to go to her website. I'm going to read about this. You know, I'll never forget just meeting you when we met in Christian Apologetics Alliance, gosh, several years ago now, and just being so moved by your testimony and your story and to be able to give back what you've given me, which is the power of your testimony, um, to others so they can learn from you. It's just really an honor and a privilege. And we're going to do part two of the universe and other words at a later date, and we're going to air that on um, on the PJC media. We're going to do part two of that. But for those of you, like I said, if you missed the first part of the broadcast, don't worry. You can listen to it by clicking on the link of wherever you are on social media, and you can listen to it again. If you have questions, Marsha, where can they find you online? They want to talk to you. Um, okay. The easiest way to ask me a direct question is to, well, there's two ways. They can come to Facebook um, and my book ministry page is Christian Answers for the New Age. You can either ask me a private question by sending a message there, or you can post a question on the page, um, or you can send me a message to my personal page. Um, you could do that, or, uh, well, you probably can post a question. I think only friends can do posts, but you can come to a thread and ask a question. Or you can email me at mmontenegro. Um, which is my name, um, or the first initial and last name, at F, like Frank, I am like Mary, dot org. And Montenegro at FIM.org. So that's by email. Um, so any of those ways, you know, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. 
Marsha, thank you for being with me on the show today. You have a wonderful, glorious, blessed day. Well, you too. Thank you so much. It was delightful as usual. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Jennifer. And it's always good to talk to Marsha from Christian Answers for the New Age. If you want to donate to her ministry, simply go to ChristianAnswersForTheNewAge.org where you can get more information about her ministry, about her articles, her video interviews, and her audio interviews that she's done. Like I said in earlier in the broadcast, Marsha is on the front lines helping us to decipher the truth from the lie and how the lies of the New Age that enter into the church are exactly that, lies. And so what I want you to do is go to her website, look at her articles. If you're questioning what she's saying, go ahead and respond to her. She gave us a way you can talk to her. But what you want to do is definitely get educated for yourself. Thank you for joining me for this edition of the show. You have a wonderful, glorious, blessed day, and God bless. <laughs>